guys, how's it going? I wanted to let you know I'm participating in JunoRimo, which is basically NaNoWriMo set in June. And I will link down below their website and their Twitter if you want to um, register a little late and follow along. Um, I've been participating in this private chat room with Jarrett, Jules, and Cheryl. I will also link their channels below. Um, and we've had this really cool conversation going with all four of us where we get to um, talk about writing, get instant feedback on what we've been working on, and just motivate each other. And it's been a very valuable resource. So I'm really looking forward to continuing the month with that and also hopefully beyond um, to other challenges. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about my new story, Akimbo. You guys all know that my first novel um, that I'm still working on is called The Sun Went Red. And that's my baby. That's my first love. Um, but now I have a brand new shiny story that's been bothering me and I wanted to write it during June. So um, I will share a little bit of that with you right now. Um, so the title is Akimbo and here's the synopsis. Disease has spread in a tiny prehistoric tribe, killing off all of the men but one. Josai, the clan outcast, is roped to him as the women walk for days on end, seeking out villages, begging to be bred to survive. What will happen when a band of desperate females and one young girl with a tendency to rampage in her sleep descend upon an unsuspecting community? So, um, here's the prologue, which I wrote yesterday, um... And this is just a little taste of what it's like. Josiah's footfalls slap haphazardly on the sun-scorched earth as she ebbs in and out of consciousness. Her body sways forward in an arc, yearning to be horizontal. Wake up, Jaja! An urgent hand paws at one of Josiah's dreadlocks, yanking. Her ears perk up, but her mind bleeds back into the spiraling vastness of dreams. A remarkable patience emanates towards her. Open your eyes, dream child. Pain blooms just behind her tear ducts, but she manages to drag her, drag her lids apart. She looks down at her bare legs and feet, beating to the rhythm that her animal brain has droned out for the better part of the day, walking in tandem with her tribe. She reaches, she reaches a hand up to grasp the chubby leg of her sister Tug, who is riding on her shoulders. An understanding passes silently between them. Mother would have never let this happen. The dream child with the girl on her bar back the dream child with the girl on her back marches ever forward, staring straight ahead. Fifty tribeswomen snake out in front of her. She is tied to the last remaining man. He hobbles before her with his knees and elbows splayed out, the only unelegant feature about him. He swoops his long neck around to look at her, his tawny brown eyes winking. Josiah spits and glares at his bald head, glinting in the sun. The old man rolls his cuffed wrists and sadly faces front again, rumbling. The rope that binds his hands together also binds him to her, her to him. It is woven together out of human hair. Um, so basically, that's just a tiny taste. Um, think like prehistoric tribes, people, um, pre-civilization. Um, they're kind of like set in Africa where they have huts, um, surrounding a water hole and then there's like spikes on the outside of their encampment to ward off lions and um, this disease kind of ransacks their little clan and kills off all the men and now they have to become like this nomadic people for the first time in their history of being a tribe and they have to um, seek out men to mate with them so that they can carry on their bloodlines and um, it's all very exciting and I don't know where it's going to take me because I have no idea um, any more than that of the story so I'm just kind of pantsing it at this moment and um, we shall see so I hope you like that and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye!